This one is red alder. So here I'm painting on with my baking soda solution. Red alder gives me quite a bit of discoloration with the baking soda solution. That's fine. As long as it's discolored across the whole board, I guess I don't really care. Came out of Snohomish, Washington. Uh, my uncle passed away. We went and cleaned up his estate. Get it ready for sale. And there were a number of, of these just staggeringly massive red alder trees. So we brought some back to Montana. Tire, well, two truckloads, actually. Two truckloads of it to cut on our mill. And it's uh, some of my most special wood, you know, for the family connection there. Uh, I, can't, I can't work with it without thinking fond memories of Uncle Mark. Now this stuff spalted. There was so much wood we brought back, and we were still so green at cutting, it took us a little longer than we would like to get to some of it. And so as a result, we got some some spalting fungus. You know, God smiles on the newbies. It turned out to be incredibly beautiful lumber, cut just perfectly at that magical point between um, wood that's sound and wood that's rot, and we hit it very, very nicely. Let's see if the electricity hits it very, very nicely. You know, we don't often spark over there. Let's put our brand up in that corner. Let's do our artistic leanings down here. Come on now. There we got her. It's like learning to drive a clutch. Sometimes you just have to slip it a bit in the beginning. Come on. Oh, those are some nice tendrils. Keep crawling. Yeah! Nice tendrils. If you've watched our other videos, you can see that this is burning somewhere in between the birch and the mulberry in terms of details. Often found it fascinating that electricity seems to have no troubles crossing the glue line. 
I was always worried the glue line would form sort of a barrier to it, but it doesn't. If anything, it uh, actually forms an attractant. Sometimes you'll get the electricity trying to shoot down the glue line and you have to back off and go somewhere else. And again, a reminder that this, this is playing with some pretty serious, pretty serious power. And that if it were to go in one finger and out the other finger, or the other hand, uh, through your heart, you'd essentially be dead, right there. No if, if, ands, buts about it. Just sayonara. Which is why I'm using, oops, still power. I am using a solid rubber rod and a fiberglass tent stake. Oh, I wish I had a second tent stake. Two tent stakes would be much better than my rubber rod. Power back up. Let's see if we can chase this one a little farther. stubborn over here. Let's see if we can get it to go up the the edge. Oh, power off. Really got to do something about that. Today what we're going to do, this is what I used to do all the time, is I would just clamp it directly to the board. See if we can get her to dance and play nice. Gorgeous. Look at these nice long chains we're getting. This is wonderful. It's going to make me a box. I could put that 406 right in the middle of that box right there. The brand. Not gonna let you touch. I like that. Is this asking for too much to have it come down here? Looks like it. You know what? We're gonna call that good. Rather than to succumb to my natural tendency of doing too much. scrub it and we'll see what she looks like it's pretty beautiful I think I'll put the, the Montana VC brand up there nestle the 406 brand right in there somewhere in between the spider webs of birch and the arrow like tendrils of the mulberry is the red alder. More than mulch. More than most, I should say. The red alder colors with the water, so it'll it'll mellow out a lot once it dries. Sanded, belt sander, well, we'll brand it first. Belt sand with, uh, I think I'm using 150 for the final belt sand on these. Then I'll jump to a 220 palm sander and a 320 palm sanding. And she'll be ready to go. Coat of poly on top. 